This video is part of the lectures related to the machine dynamics topic. This is the third video dealing with the kinematics of planar mechanisms. In this video, we are going to explain how to undertake a position analysis of four bar mechanisms. In this video, we are going to see how to formulate a position problem, how to write the equations of a position problem, and how to solve the equations of a position problem. All these three steps, formulation, modeling, and solving, will be applied to the example of a planar four-bar mechanism. This video is organized as follows. First we are going to formulate the problem to be solved. We are going to define the data or the given parameters of the position problem. We are going to define the unknowns. We are going to determine how many equations are required to solve the position problem. In a second step we are going to establish the loop closure equations required to solve the position problem. Loop closure equations are vector equations that are written in terms of the position vectors of the links in a loop. Thirdly, we are going to give techniques to solve the established loop closure equations. The loop closure equations will be written in terms of trigonometric functions. Thus, solving the position problem will be based on the use of some trigonometric identities. In a fourth step we will discuss the obtain the solutions. At last we are going to work some examples. Let's start now with the first part, problem formulation. The four bar mechanism is built from four bars, one reference static bar and three rotating bars, which are assembled together using four rotating or pin kinematic pairs. Two of the rotating bars have fixed axis rotation motion, the bars A, B, and C, D. And the third, the bar B, C, has a general motion. In order to determine the number of unknowns, we need first to determine the mobility of the mechanism. The mobility is required to know how many degrees of freedom are controlled by an external source of energy. There should be as many given displacement parameters as the number of mobility. The mobility is given by the equation 3 times, L minus 1, minus 2 times J1, minus J2. Where L is the number of links, J1 is the number of lower pairs, and J2 is the number of higher pairs. Here, L is equal to 4, as there are four bars, J1 is equal to 4, as four pin joints are used to assemble the bars, and J2 is equal to 0 as there is no cam or gear kinematic pair. Thus, mobility is equal to 1. The number of unknowns is given by L-1 minus M. There are L-1 moving bars, and we need a displacement parameter for each bar. We need also to know as many parameters as the number of mobility. Thus we have to subtract minus m. The number of unknowns is equal to 4 minus 1 minus 1, which is equal to 2. Here, there are 3 rotating bars. Thus, 3 angles are required, one for each bar, to define the position of the mechanism. However, one angle should be considered as given, as mobility is equal to 1. Thus, two angles are considered as the unknowns of the position problem. The position problem should be solved in order to determine the two unknown angles in terms of the given angle. As the problem has two unknowns, one loop vector equation is required. A loop vector equation gives two scalar algebraic equations, which is the same number as unknowns. For the position problem of the four-bar mechanism, we first assume that the bar lengths are given. The angle of the ground bar should also be given. As mobility is equal to 1, we will have one degree of freedom controlled by an external source of energy. As example, we will assume that, the angle of the second bar, or bar A, B, is given. Thus, the unknowns are the angle of the bar BC, the coupler bar, and the angle of the bar CD, link 4. We are going to establish expressions of the angles theta 3 and theta 4, in terms of 
R1, R2, R3, R4, θ1, and θ2. We have completed the problem formulation part, and we are going to start with second part dealing with the writing of the loop closure equation. The position problem has two unknowns the coupler angle and the link 4 angle. Thus, one loop closure equation is required. As each loop closure is a vector equation. In planar kinematics, each vector equation gives two algebraic equations. By writing one loop closure equation, we will have at the end two algebraic equations. In order to write the loop closure equation, we need to write the position of one point relatively to another point. Using two different paths and using the vector positions of links. Here, for example, we will work with C and A. We will write the position of C relatively to A. This is only one alternative. It is possible to write the position of C relatively to A, using B as intermediate point. Thus, RC relatively to A is equal to RC relatively to B plus RB relatively to A. We can also write this vector equality as the vector position of C relatively to A is equal to the vector AB plus the vector BC. Indeed, the vector RC relatively to B is the vector BC. And the vector RB relatively to A is the vector AB. Here the vector AB is the vector R2, the vector position of link 2. Also, BC is the vector R3, the vector position of link 3, the coupler. Thus the vector RC relatively to A, is equal to R2 plus R3. It is possible to write the position of C relatively to A, using D as intermediate point. Thus, RC relatively to A is equal to RC relatively to D plus RD relatively to A. We can also write this vector equality as the vector position of C relatively to A, is equal to the vector AD plus the vector DC. Indeed, the vector RC relatively to D is the vector DC. And the vector RD relatively to A is the vector AD. Here the vector AD is the vector R1, which is the vector position of link 1, the ground. Also, DC is the vector R4, the vector position of link 4. Thus, the vector RC relatively to A, is equal to R1 plus R4. On one hand, we have the vector RC relatively to A, is equal to R1 plus R4. On the other hand, we have the vector RC relatively to A, is equal to the vector R2 plus the vector R3. Thus, R2 plus R3 is equal to R1 plus R4. This is the loop closure that we will solve to find the two unknowns theta 3 and theta 4. After completing the first part, which is the problem formulation or the problem statement. After completing the second part, which is writing the loop closure equation. We are going to learn now how to solve the established loop closure equation. We have just established the loop vector equation. The equation writes. The vector R2 plus the vector R3 is equal to vector R1 plus vector R4. First, we need to define the angles of all vectors R1, R2, R3, and R4. The angles should be defined at the origin of each vector starting from the horizontal I vector. The vector R1 is a horizontal vector directed rightwards. The angle theta 1 is defined in point A, and is equal to 0 degrees. The angle theta 2 is defined as shown here in A. The angle theta 3 is defined as shown in B. And the angle theta 4 is defined as shown in D. Considering the loop vector equation, we can first move vector R2 to the right and vector R4 to left. Thus, we have the unknowns or undetermined vectors at the left, and the knowns or determined vectors at the right. 
the vector equation writes, vector r3 minus vector r4, is equal to, vector r1 minus vector r2. If this equation is valid in a vector form, it is also valid using vectors coordinates. Using horizontal coordinates, we obtain, r3x minus r4x, is equal to r1x minus r2x. Also using vertical coordinates, we obtain, r3y minus r4y, is equal to r1y minus r2y. The horizontal coordinates are given by the modulus times cosine the angle. And, the vertical coordinates are given by the modulus times sine the angle. Thus, the first scalar equation gives, r3 cosine theta 3, minus r4 cosine theta 4, is equal to, r1 cosine theta 1, minus r2 cosine theta 2. And, the second scalar equation gives, r3 sine theta 3, minus r4 sine theta 4, is equal to, r1 sine theta 1, minus r2 sine theta 2. We would like now, to solve these two equations, where the unknowns are the angles theta 3 and theta 4. These are two nonlinear equations, as they involve the sine and cosine of the unknowns. The solving procedure will be different from solving classical linear equations. Here we need to cancel one unknowns using some trigonometric identities. Mainly, we will use the fact that for any angle, a, cosine square a, plus sine square a, is equal to 1. Thus, in a first step, we send r4 cosine theta 4, r4 sine theta 4 to the right sides of the two equations. Now, we have only theta 3 at the left side. In order to make appear cosine square theta 3, and sine square theta 3, we raise the two equations to the power 2. Hence, we will have, r3 cosine theta 3 square, equal to, r4 cosine theta 4 plus r1 cosine theta 1 minus r2 cosine theta 2, square. And, r3 sine theta 3 square, equal to, r4 sine theta 4 plus r1 sine theta 1 minus r2 sine theta 2, square. Then, we need to sum the two equations by adding the left sides and the right sides. We need now to simplify each side separately. Let's start by the left side. We have r3 cosine theta 3 square, plus, r3 sine theta 3 square. This expression can be expanded as r3 square, cosine square theta 3, plus, r3 square sine square theta 3. Here r3 square is common factor of the two terms. Hence it is possible to write r3 square times, cosine square theta 3 plus sine square theta 3. As cosine square theta 3 plus sine square theta 3 is equal to 1, the expression can be simplified to r3 square. At the right side, we have r4 cosine theta 4 plus r1 cosine theta 1 minus r2 cosine theta 2, the all square, plus r4 sine theta 4 plus r1 sine theta 1 minus r2 sine theta 2, the all square. Here we need to use the following algebraic identity, where x plus y minus z, square, is equal to x square, plus y square, plus z square, plus 2xy, minus, 2xz, minus 2yz. Using this identity, the right side is equal to r4 cosine theta 4, square, plus r1 cosine theta 1, square, plus r2 cosine theta 2, square, plus 2r1 r4 cosine theta 1 cosine theta 4, minus 2r2 r4 cosine theta 2 cosine theta 4, minus 2r1 r2 cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2. These terms come from the first term. The second term gives r4 sine theta 4, square, plus r1 sine theta 1, square, plus r2 sine theta 2, square, plus 2r1 r4 sine theta 1 sine theta 4, minus 2r2 r4 sine theta 2 sine theta 4. 
minus 2 r1 r2 sine theta 1 sine theta 2. The right term can be simplified further. We have r4 cosine theta 4, square, plus r4 sine theta 4, square, is equal to r4 square. We have also r1 cosine theta 1, square, plus r1 sine theta 1, square, is equal to r1 square. And, we have r2 cosine theta 2, square, plus r2 sine theta 2, square, is equal to r2 square. Then we have, 2 r1 r2 cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2, plus 2 r1 r2 sine theta 1 sine theta 2, is equal to, 2 r1 r2 cosine, theta 2 minus theta 1. This is due to the trigonometric identity, which gives, cosine x minus y, is equal to cosine x cosine y plus sine x sine y. We have also, 2 r1 r4 cosine theta 1 cosine theta 4, and 2 r2 r4 cosine theta 2 cosine theta 4. Have, R4 cosine theta 4 as a common factor, thus can be written as 2R4 times R1 cosine theta 1 minus R2 cosine theta 2 times cosine theta 4. Similarly, we have also 2R1 R4 sine theta 1 sine theta 4 and 2R2 R4 sine theta 2 sine theta 4. Have R4 sine theta 4 as a common factor, thus can be written as 2R4 times r1 sine theta 1 minus r2 sine theta 2, times sine theta 4. Let's go back to our equation. We have showed that the left side is simply equal to r3 square, and that the right side is equal to r4 square, plus r1 square, plus r2 square, minus 2 r1 r2 cosine theta 2 minus theta 1 plus 2 r4 times, r1 cosine theta 1 minus r2 cosine theta 2, times cosine theta 4, plus 2 r4 times, r1 sine theta 1 minus r2 sine theta 2, times sine theta 4. This equation can be simplified as, a, cosine theta 4, plus b sine theta 4, is equal to k, where, a is equal to, 2 r4 times, r1 cosine theta 1 minus r2 cosine theta 2. b is equal to, 2 r4 times, r1 sine theta 1 minus r2 sine theta 2. And, k is equal to, r3 square, minus r4 square, minus r1 square, minus r2 square, plus 2 r1 r2 cosine, theta 2 minus theta 1. There are few procedures to solve this equation. Here we are going to transform the equation as cosine phi time cosine theta 4 plus sine phi time sine theta 4 is equal to k dash. If we succeed to write the equation as cosine phi time cosine theta 4 plus sine phi time sine theta 4 is equal to k dash, then it will be easy to write the equation as cosine phi minus theta 4 is equal to k dash. Let's go back to the original equation and try to carry out the suggested transformation. We need first to divide the equation by the square root of a square plus b square. Thus, the equation writes a divided by the square root of a square plus b square times cosine theta 4 plus b divided by the square root of a square plus b square times sine theta 4 equal to k divided by the square root of a square plus b square. Let's denote a divided by the square root of a square plus b square as cosine and angle phi and b divided by the square root of a square plus b square 
as sine the angle phi. It is possible to do this because we will have cosine square phi, plus sine square phi, is equal to 1. That's why we have divided the equation by square root of, a, square, plus b square. Hence, we have, cosine phi times cosine theta 4, plus, sine phi times sine theta 4, is equal to k divided by, square root of, a, square, plus b square. The left hand of the equation can be simplified as, cosine, phi minus theta 4, because, cosine x times cosine y, plus, sine x times sine y, is equal to cosine x minus y, for any angles x and y. Therefore, we have now, cosine, phi minus theta 4, is equal to, k divided by, square root of, a, square, plus b square. Consequently, phi minus theta 4, is equal to, plus or minus, cosine inverse of, k divided by square root of, a, square, plus b square, or, theta 4 is equal to, phi plus or minus, cosine inverse of, k divided by square root of, a, square, plus b square. Here there are two possible solutions for the angle theta 4. These two solutions correspond to two different possibilities to assemble the 4-bar linkage. They correspond to the two circuits of the 4-bar linkage. Analyzing the position problem of the 4-bar linkage using loop vector equations, we have established two equations in terms of the angles theta 3 and theta 4, that involves the trigonometric functions sine and cosine. After some simplifications, we have succeeded to obtain one equation that involves the sine and cosine of the angle theta 4 only. That we have succeeded to solve as follows. As we have the expression of cosine phi and sine phi, it is possible to determine phi. Mainly, phi is equal to cosine inverse of a divided by square root of a square plus b square. If sine phi is positive or if b is positive, or phi is equal to minus cosine inverse of a divided by square root of a square plus b square. If sine phi is negative or if b is negative. Here, there only one value for phi, depending on the sine of b. Finally theta 4 writes as follows when substituting the expression of phi. We succeeded here to have the expression of theta 4, in terms of, the bar lengths, and the angles theta 3, and theta 4. We need to go back to the original position equations to determine theta 3. First, we can express now cosine theta 3, from the first equation, and then, sine theta 3, from the second equation. Thus, for each solution of theta 4, corresponds only one solution of theta 3. Depending on the sine of, sine theta 3. Depending on the sine of, r1 sine theta 1, minus r2 sine theta 2, plus r4 sine theta 4. Here, we have completed the theoretical exact solution of the position angles. And we have a closed form solutions for the angles theta 3 and theta 4. There are two possible solutions. After having solved the position problem equations, let's have a discussion of these solutions. First, the solution of the position problem, of the 4-bar mechanism, can be undertaken within few steps. First, we calculate the constants a, b, and k. Depending on the sine of b, the angle theta 4 can be obtained using cosine inverse trigonometric functions. Subsequently, we can calculate the constant c. Depending on the sine of the constant c, we can calculate theta 3, 
using also cosine inverse functions. Depending on either B is positive or negative, there are two possible solutions of theta 4. Once theta 4 is calculated, there is one possible solution of theta 3. Therefore, for each value of the crank angle theta 2, there are two possible couples, theta 3 theta 4. Consequently, there are two possible assemblages of a 4 bar linkage. Or, there are two possible circuits of a 4 bar mechanism. For the same position of the crank bar, for the same value of theta 2, there are two possible different ways to assemble the mechanism. There are two possible ways to connect the third and fourth bars. However, once the bars are connected, the linkage can move only within a circuit. The four bar mechanism cannot jump from a circuit to another. To move from one circuit to another, it is needed to disassemble the bars. Depending on either the ratio k over square root of a square plus b square is lower than 1 or equal to 1 or higher than 1. There are two solution of the theta 4 or only one solution or no solution at all. If the bar 2 is a crank bar, thus the ratio k over square root of a square plus b square is lower than, or equal to 1, for all values of theta 2. If the bar 2 is a rocker bar, thus, the ratio k over, square root of, a, square, plus b square, is higher than 1, for some values of theta 2. If the ratio k over, square root of, a, square, plus b square, is higher than 1, for all values of theta 2, it means it is not possible to assemble the bars together. It is then required to modify the bar lengths. We have showed here how to formulate the position problem and how to write the loop closure equation for a 4 bar mechanism. We have also showed how to solve the established equations. We have also given some brief discussion of the obtained solutions. We have showed here how to formulate the position problem and In this first example, we are asked to calculate the angles theta 3 and theta 4 for the four bar mechanism shown. Here all bars lengths are given. And the crank angle is also given. In order to calculate the angles theta 3 and theta 4, we are going to use the equations established previously. First, we need to calculate the constants a, b, and k considering the values of theta 1, theta 2, r1, r2, r3, and r4. Using a calculator, a is equal to 4180.5 cm square. b is equal to minus 2114.3 cm square. and k is equal to minus 509.44 cm square. As b is negative we use the following expressions for theta 4. Thus the two solutions of theta 4 are 69.41 degrees and minus 123.1 degrees. Now let's calculate theta 3, when theta 4 is equal to 69.41 degrees. We need first to calculate the constant C. Using a calculator give C is equal to 18.63 centimeters. As C is positive, Theta 3 is given using the following expression, using a calculator gives theta 3 equal to 16.66 degrees. When theta 4 is equal to minus 123.1 degrees. C is equal to minus 61.20 cm. As C is negative, theta 3 is given using the following expression, 
using a calculator gives theta 3 equal to minus 70.32 degrees. Therefore, the first solution gives theta 3 is equal to 16.66 degrees and theta 4 is equal to 69.41 degrees. The 4 bar linkage will look as shown. The second solution gives theta 3 is equal to minus 70.32 degrees and theta 4 is equal to minus 123.1 degrees. The 4 bar linkage will look as shown. In this second example, we consider a Watts 4 bar straight line mechanism. It is asked to determine the position of point E. The bar lengths and the crank angle theta 2 are given. It is stated that the angle theta 4 is between 140 degrees and 180 degrees. We need here first, to determine angles theta 3 and theta 4. Then we can determine the position of point E, the center of bar BC. Here R2 and R4 are equal to 35 centimeters. R3 is equal to 20 centimeters. We have also R1 cosine theta 1 is equal to 70 centimeters. And R1 sine theta 1 is equal to minus 20 centimeters. We need then to calculate R1 and the angle theta 1. We need then to calculate the constants A, B, and K. Here B is negative. Thus the two possible solutions of theta 4 are calculated as follows. Thus the values of theta 4 are 122.93 degrees and 152.54 degrees. We consider here 152.54 degrees as it is higher than 140 degrees and lower than 180 degrees. Considering that theta 4 is 152.54 degrees. The constant C is calculated as follows and is equal to minus 18.64 centimeters. As C is negative, theta 3 is calculated as follows, and is equal to minus 68.83 degrees. To define the position of point E, we choose point A, as a reference point. The position of E relatively to A is given by the vector AE, or also vector AB plus vector BE. Thus, the horizontal coordinate, x e, is equal to r2 cosine theta 2, plus r3 over 2 times cosine theta 3. Substituting by the numerical values, and using a calculator gives, x e equal to 35.33 cm. Likewise, the horizontal coordinate, y e, is equal to r2 sine theta 2, plus r3 over 2 times sine theta 3. Substituting by the numerical values, and using a calculator gives, y e equal to 5.47 cm. Here, we need to recall that this Watts 4 bar mechanism, is an approximate straight line mechanism. Here the point E move approximately along the vertical line at midway between A and D. Let's move to the third example. It is asked to find the angles theta 2 and theta 3, where R1 is equal to the distance AD. R2 is equal to the distance AB, R3 is equal to BC, and, R4 is equal to DC. R1, R2, R3, and R4 are all given. Though, it is a slider crank linkage considered here, developing position analysis here is similar to the analysis of the 4 bar linkage. As here the position of the slider is given, and two angles are unknowns, the crank angle and the connecting rod angle. Considering loop vector equation AB plus BC, is equal to AD plus DC. Using horizontal coordinates gives, R2 cosine theta 2, plus R3 cosine theta 3, is equal to R4. Also using the vertical coordinates gives, R2 sine theta 2, plus R3 sine theta 3, is equal to R1. For more details on how deriving these equations, you can watch the video on, Position Analysis of Slider Crank Mechanisms. In order to solve the equations, 
we are going to work in same way as we derived solutions of the 4 bar linkage. Thus, first, we will move the term with theta 3, to the right side. Then we sum, the square of the two equations. After some simplifications, we get r2 square is equal to r1 square plus r3 square plus r4 square minus 2 r3 r4 cosine theta 3 minus 2 r1 r3 sine theta 3 or also 2 r3 r4 cosine theta 3 plus 2 r1 r3 sine theta 3 is equal to r1 square minus r2 square plus r3 square plus r4 square the equation 2 r3 r4 cosine theta 3 plus 2 r1 r3 sine theta 3 is equal to r1 square minus r2 square plus r3 square plus r4 square can be written as a cosine theta 3 plus b sine theta 3 is equal to k where a is equal to 2 r3 r4 b is equal to 2 r1 r3 and k is equal to r1 square minus r2 square plus r3 square plus r4 square therefore the solution theta is equal to cosine inverse of a over square root of a square plus b square plus or minus cosine inverse of k over square root of a square plus b square Once we have derived the solution of theta 3, we go back to the equations. r2 cosine theta 2 is equal to r4 minus r3 cosine theta 3. And r2 sine theta 2 is equal to r1 minus r3 sine theta 3. The solution is straightforward. Theta 2 is equal to plus or minus cosine inverse r4 minus r3 cosine theta 3 over r2 depending on the sign of r1 minus r3 sine theta 3 in this fourth and last example it is asked to find all missing angles for the what 6 bar mechanism shown here it is also asked to consider that theta 4 and theta 6 are positive angles in this example also though it is a 6 bar mechanism it is possible to solve it using the solution of a 4 bar mechanism. By considering first the loop ABCD, and then the loop DEFG. Let's first focus on the loop ABCD. This forms a 4 bar linkage, where the ground angle is 0, and the crank angle is 60 degrees. We can use the equations established for the 4 bar mechanism. First we calculate the constants a, b, and k. The two possible values of theta for a, are 54.03 degrees, and minus 135.82 degrees. As recommended we keep the positive value of theta for, a. We calculate the constant c. And then we obtain that theta 3 is equal to 16.57 degrees. Now we have the angle theta 3 is equal to 16.57 degrees. Also the angle theta 4a is equal to 54.03 degrees. Consequently, the angle theta 4b is equal to 34.03 degrees. We have solved the position problem for the first loop ABCD. Now let's move and focus on the second loop, the loop DEFG. We use the same procedure as for the loop ABCD. First we calculate the constants A, B, and K. The two possible values of theta 6 are 57.00 degrees and minus 143.03 degrees. As recommended we keep the positive value of theta 6. We calculate the constant C. And then we obtain that theta 5 is equal to 18.07 degrees. Here we have the what 6 bar linkage with all missing angles. The angles are obtained in two steps. In each step the 4 bar equations were used. <laughs>